So in today's video, I wanted to just create a super easy to follow, beginner friendly, how to write this few letters video. So I've already made a video on how to write this few letters and to me, I thought it was pretty good, but I wanted to film another one, but this time include some free letters for you all to use. Um, and these are just like some basic letters that I literally just came up with off the top of my head. Um, these are nothing like the letters that I offer, but they will still do the same thing. And I'm just really making this video just to show you how easy it is to create a dispute letter without adding all those extra laws and all those things up in there. It's really, really simple. This video will not contain like any follow-up letters or anything like that. This is just really getting you started. So um, hopefully this helps. Keep watching. <laughs> at your personal information update letter so you want to date your letter put your name and address the credit bureau um whichever credit bureau you're writing to and their address you want to re um, update personal information and literally guys it's this simple the following names are in that are incorrect please delete the following list the incorrect names the following addresses are incorrect please delete the following incorrect address <laughs> or address well, however you say it i'm so country i just say address <laughs> But the following phone numbers are incorrect. Please delete the following and then list the incorrect phone numbers. Um, but the way I have it set up is that you basically just list, like in the order that they have it on your personal information, list it in the exact order and make sure that you highlight the errors that you're wanting them to delete. And then at the bottom, please send me an updated copy of my credit report reflecting the above changes. Thanks. And then type or print your name. Never sign your letters. Um, I don't know if it's completely 100% true, but it's been said that there are some companies out there that could potentially try to, you know, forge your signature or copy your signature onto a contract to verify your debt. Like when you sit in debt validation letters, um, I've personally never had it happen, but I've also never signed my letters. Um, so, and I don't plan on it because I don't want to even let that opportunity happen. I really, I think that would take a lot of guts and balls for a company to do that but hey that's just what people say that's what i've heard so i just don't want to risk it so i'm telling you don't do it let's move along to the increase so you're always going to date and address all of your letters um you don't necessarily have to put a subject line you don't have to do that but i just do it anyway just to let them know hey this is the reason why i'm writing to you in the first place so please remove the following unauthorized increase and then list increase how many you list is completely up to you. I always say list anywhere from five to six, but if you have 10, list all 10 inquiries. Just make sure those inquiries are not tied to an open account. Um, please send me an updated copy of my credit report reflecting the above changes, thanks, and then put your name. You can also call the credit bureaus to have unauthorized inquiries removed. Um, you wanna call them, but already have the list of inquiries, so that will be the name of the company and the month and year for the inquiry and that, that will be listed on your credit report. So you would just tell them, you know, hey, Navy Federal, October, 2020, Capital One, December, 2018, just like that and let them know I didn't authorize these inquiries, please remove them. That's all you have to do. You can call to get personal information updated as well. You can even read it just the way, well, don't call them talking about the following names or incorrect, but just say, you know, I have some, some information that I would like remove, it's not accurate. Moving along. Okay, now we're going to talk about late payments. So as you guys can see, all of the letters are starting off the same way. Um, after reviewing my credit report, I noticed the following accounts are not being reported correctly. Please update the following accounts as paid. Put the account number and then list the date of payments that they have listed as late that are not actually late payments. So this is only going to work if you have proof of payment. Now, I've had instances where I've sent in a late pay letter without sending in proof of payment and the uh, payments were updated. But I do want to let you know that every time we send in a dispute letter in regards to an account, the credit bureaus do contact the creditor just to validate that the information that we're sending in is true or not. So it will be possible that you don't have to submit proof of payment, but I would highly suggest that if you know for a fact that you did submit a payment, the payment actually did clear and go through, it was not late, send your proof of payment in along with your dispute letter so they can update it. Moving along to collections. 
Now with collections, there is a system to follow with getting collections removed. It doesn't matter if it's a medical collection, a collection from a bank, a collection is a collection. The first step with every collection is to send a debt validation letter. Now, like I said to you in the beginning of this video, these letters are nothing like the letters that I offer on my site, but I just wanted to show you that you can write like a simple letter and still it have the same effect. However, like in my letter, it kind of lists the things that I'm looking for from them. But dear collection agency, oh, where it says the subject line, partial account number. I have a lot of people who ask, what is what do I put as far as account number? They have a, a account number that lists like a bunch of X's. Put the partial account number. Don't list the account number, the full account number. List it the way it shows on your credit report. So if it's one, two, three, four, five, X, 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 you put it just like that. So dear collection agency, after reviewing my credit report, I noticed the following account and then list account is being listed. Please provide verification of this debt. So what you would do then is just send that letter off. Thank you and put your name. Um, and basically, you don't have to explain why you need verification of debt. You don't even have to ask them to provide contracts bearing your signature. Just you asking them to verify the debt is enough because it is your right to ask them to verify the debt. But like I was saying before, with every collection, you always want to send a debt validation letter first before you just pay them. Now, let's assume that they verify the debt. You're going to send a pay for deletion letter. So um, you still put that partial account number at the top. Just list it, however. Dear collection agency, I am writing in response to your letter dated. List the date in reference to the account above. I wish to settle this debt. I am willing to pay. And then put the amount you're willing to pay. Some people offer, well, it's, it's said to offer anywhere from 40 to 60%. I've seen people offer as low as 20% and get accounts removed. I've personally offered as low as 20% and have gotten an account removed. Um, in return, you agree to remove all information regarding this account from the credit reporting agencies. Please forward your agreement to the address I have listed above. Thank you and put your name. Simple and straight to the point. So we're going to move right along to charge-offs. Now, with charge-offs, um, there are a couple ways I handle charge-offs. Now, if you are a beginner, which I'm assuming you are watching this video, um, I handle charge-offs in like a couple of ways. First, if I'm gonna dispute the charge off with the credit bureaus, then I'm gonna look for inconsistencies with how the account is reporting. So you're looking at a factual dispute template on the screen right now. So basically what the factual dispute is, is exactly what it sounds like. You are disputing based off, you know, things that they don't have on your um, credit report that are listed inaccurately. You know, they're not facts. So um, if your account is being furnished by the same creditor, then the information should match across all three bureaus but in the event that you notice that the account there are inconsistencies you will follow this method you know to get the account removed because accounts have to be accurately reporting on your credit report in order to be there and if they're not you can use that as leverage to get the account deleted now another way to get charge off uh, removed is to settle especially if the debt is still with the original creditor so um, what I would do is same, just like with the same pay to delete letter you saw or pay for deletion, however you say it, um, you put the company's, uh, the creditor address, not the collection agency or the credit bureaus, you're writing directly to the company. Dear name of company, I'm writing in response to your letter, or you could say I am writing in reference to the account listed above. Um, or you could say, if they haven't written you a letter, you could say I'm writing, um, in response to the account uh, opened or reported on my rec credit on my credit report, and then list the date that the account was reported to your credit report. Um, I wish to settle this debt. I'm willing to pay, and then insert the amount. In return, you agree to remove all information regarding this account from the credit reporting agencies. Please forward your agreement to the address I have listed above. Thank you and print your name. And then that's it. So I would only recommend settling the account if it's still with the original creditor. But be mindful um, when you're disputing accounts um, that are charged off because if it's still within the statute of limitations, you could possibly be sued. Um, and it's just a possibility. Um, and we'll never know if they'll sue you or not. An account could be within the statute of limitations and the company may not sue you, but there are some companies out there who will, you know, um, and it's just hard to tell. And I can't really say like for certain which companies are. 
but just basically with with charge offs if they're still um within the statute of limitations just kind of tread lightly but you know you have to get the debt i would rather you pay the original creditor than pay a collection agency or allow the the debt to not only charge off but be sold so now you have a charge off and a collection on your credit report so if you can work out something with the original creditor by all means do that all right so moving along to uh public records so i'm not gonna dive too deep like with bankruptcies there is a there's a process there's a steps there's a steps there are steps you have to take in order to successfully get a bankruptcy removed um and it, it takes time to get bankruptcies removed i'm not gonna lie to you nothing about removing a public record is easy um so you want to date your letter and you're going to write to the credit bureaus um and you're going to ask them how did they verify your bankruptcy a lot of this information is already listed on the credit bureau's website so you could skip this step and just look on their websites and then just click on maybe public record information if you go look on my how to remove bankruptcies video i have links listed in that video um that will take you directly to their websites and um in the video i explain how to properly the steps to take to remove a bankruptcy so i'm not going to go through the steps but the first step you would take as a beginner with removing bankruptcies is seeking a method of verification so you want to say dear credit bureau Please provide your method of verification for the following items. So if you have more than one bankruptcy, obviously you would say items. So you would put the type of bankruptcy, whether it was a chapter 7, 13, or 13, and then you would put the file or case number, which is basically the same number. I would like to know how you verify this information, name of the company, name of court, who did you speak to, what documents did they provide to verify this item? Thank you. And then put your name. Y'all screenshot these letters. So... Yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to just writing basic dispute letters. Like, it doesn't take a lot um, to write your dispute letters. Keep it simple. Keep it short. Keep it straight to the point. Um, but I'm, I'm that kind of person anyway. I just like to get straight to the point with whatever it is I'm doing. Um, but I found that letters that are short and sweet get the job done. And it just, like I said in, the, in my other video, it just doesn't take pages to get your point across. Because the bureaus are already familiar with the FCRA. They already know what they can and cannot do. They know that they need to have a um, method of verification letters back to you in 15 days. They know they need to respond to your dispute letters within 30 days. Like, they know this. But putting it in your letter doesn't hurt, but it's not necessary. So, also, some additional tips for my beginners. Um... The bureaus have 30 days from the date they receive your letter to get in, get a response back to you. So when you drop your letters off at the post office, do not automatically start counting and say, okay, so I dropped it off on the 1st. By December 30th, they better have you know information back to me. It's not going to be on December 30th. It's going to be on the date that they receive the letter. That's when you start counting your 30 days. So I don't, you don't have to send your letter certified, but it doesn't hurt. It helps you be able to track when they receive your letters if you do send certified. So now with everything going on with COVID and, you know, the delays and disputes or people just receiving so many stall tactics or not even getting responses from the bureaus, I've been sending everything certified just for that reason because, I mean, it costs money to print these letters like ink, internet, just all the things that we're having to pay for just to get the letters to them, just for them to either not respond or send us a stall letter. So just to be safe, I've been sending all of my letters certified. It does cost a little more. Um, it's not necessary, you guys, but just to be able to track when they receive the letter so you can know by what date you should have a response in case you have to file a CFPB complaint for them failing to um, handle your dispute properly, you know, or failing to validate information, whatever the case may be, you know, you need to know, you have to know. So always make copies of your letters, send certified if you can afford it. If not, do not worry about it. You just have to be, um, you have to be a little bit more organized than those of, than the ones who send certified, um, because they'll get like a, a receipt back in the mail that says, Hey, somebody received it, or they'll get a tracking number where they can track that the letters have arrived. So if you choose not to send certified, make copies of every letter that you send to the bureaus. Um, keep the dates. You know, um, obviously you're going to have the date on your letter, but also just keep that maybe in a separate notebook or something. And um, that way, if you have to file a complaint against the bureaus or maybe a creditor or collection agency for not um, adhering, not um, 
responding to your dispute, you know, you have proof. Always send in a copy of your driver's license and a copy of your social security card. If your address is not the same as the one that's listed on your driver's license, send in a utility bill. So I hope this video helps um, you guys out. If you have any questions, definitely leave a comment below. There will be a link in my description box where if there are some videos that you would like to see or you would like me to elaborate more on, just click that link. It's going to take you like to a little um, Google form and just submit the video that you would like to see, whether it's credit repair related or it's business related from a credit repair standpoint, or if it's just any other type of videos that y'all would like to see on my um, page on my YouTube channel. Just let me know. And I, you know, I want to keep it. I want to give everybody what they're looking for. Okay. So um, y'all have a great day. And as usual, love you guys. Peace out.